100 yen Toa Plan Shooting Battle 1, Gradius Deluxe Packs 100 yen, Cho Aniki for the PS2 100 yen, and then we have Dodonpachi Daiojo 100 yen. Wow. And then here we go, second year that I am an ambassador for the Hard Off family. Great to be a part of that. Guys, my name is JJ. We are here once again in Saitama. We're going to check out this Hard Off. So let's go ahead and go inside and we're going to start off right off the bat here at the display case. And I got to be honest, when I came in here, I thought this place was a little bit of a bust. Because, you know, we find ourselves uh, throughout our collection, our collecting journeys at different points at different times, you know, blah, blah, blah. And what I'm looking for, I wasn't really finding here. But then on my way out, those uh, those those four games just uh, just appeared out of nowhere. Actually, they were at the register and they were about to put them out. They had a basket of games there and I just uh, quickly raided that thing. And, you know, my my frown went quickly into a smile super happy with that pickup but my goodness um and then you know just kind of looking back at this footage too you kind of realize that there is a few things that um you always uh, i guess what i'm trying to say is that sometimes there's a few things that you miss while you're there and then just quickly look at the size of the ps5 look at this thing and as it stands in my game room i have nowhere to accommodate that beast but I'll definitely be, be getting one at some point. And perhaps maybe there's going to be a, a slimmer redesign in the future. I kind of would like something um, on the size of the Series S. But this is this definitely doesn't have any uh, physical media playback. So definitely going to skip on this one. But yeah, just, uh, just going back here. What else do we have? Well, first of all, we have a, a Game Boy Advanced Micro. I'm definitely going to be picking up one of these bad boys soon. Look at that thing. So beastly looking and so tiny too. But yeah, just, uh, just, I guess going back to what I was talking about, you know, definitely search every nook and cranny of these shops. You just never know what you're going to find and definitely come with the game plan. No pun intended, because you definitely want to, you don't want to miss out on some, on some things and have regret later. Here we have a fully backwards compatible PS3 and then we have the core graphics now this is the the mini the re-release for 21,000 yen that thing has always been pricey from the day that it was released and then here we have the snoopy panorama screen game and watch for 25,000 yen we have the original game boy in the back there for 5,000 yen and then we have a few other little cool little things we have the game boy player there well we have a wonder swan for 15,000 then we have the game boy player for 7,000 that does include the disc and then we have a Famicom that's 45,000 yen and that thing looks almost new. Now, is that worth it? I don't really know, but they definitely have it. And then we have a racing wheel. Now, before we continue, I just want to mention again, the, uh, doing a little plug here for my Retro Rewire game tours. Now, it's not just Akihabara, but it's also the greater Tokyo area as well as Saitama, Chiba, Kanagawa. I've been a lot of these places, did a lot of game hunting. So definitely consider this game tour. Definitely gonna, we're, and we're also gonna be testing stuff. So there's gonna be a lot of wonderful things that we'll find, but back to the video at hand. Here we go. And even, even if you don't wanna take advantage of, you know, with the, the game tours, definitely leave the video a like, subscribe, hit the bell. Any kind of support definitely helps, keeps the motivation up, you all know how it goes. And then here we go. That Xbox, uh, Xbox One S, that's a beautiful uh, console, definitely in my top five for uh, all-time console designs. But here, let's go ahead and look at the retro, uh, the little retro section. And once again, we have the Samba de Amigo Maracas. These, thing have, these things, I've been seeing these at every hard off for like the last month and a half, it seems. And then we have Flipool, an exciting cube game. Have no idea what that could be about. As well as this, look at this, Aconcagua. 3,000. This looks like a first-party PlayStation 1 title. And to my knowledge, that did not get a North American release. So I wonder I wonder what the deal with that is. Looks like some kind of survival action game. And then here we'll just be going through the motion, checking out these PS1 games. There's not really anything that's, uh, I guess, too, uh, too standout. And, you know... Just kind of what I was going back to what I was talking about earlier. This this place was a little bit, um, at least for me personally, when I was there recording, it was a little bit of a letdown, I felt. But we have Biohazard uh, Director's Cut there for 500 yen. 
And, but looking back at the footage, you know, I've acquired new hardware and then I'm like, man, I wouldn't mind going back to picking, uh, picking that up, uh, specifically talking about the Neo Geo Pocket. We'll see a few games, uh, for the Pocket that I didn't really, uh, bat an eye at, but now I'm thinking like, oh man, I would like to have picked that up. We have JoJo's Bizarre Adventure for the Dreamcast for 5,000 yen. This is one of the, one of the few remaining Dreamcast fighting games that, um, I have yet to add to my collection. And then here we have the Sonic uh, Adventure 2 Battle uh, 10th Anniversary Collection for 7,000 yen. That one's a little bit tempting. I used to have the, the North American release, but it's been a long time. And then look at this, Metal Gear Solid, the Twin Snakes, 4,000 yen. This has full English language support. And the, uh, the condition of this is actually really, really nice. And then we have Kowloon's Gate. Look at all those kanjis. Something, there's an evil aura about this game. I don't know too much about it, but kind of a cool looking uh, design there and then here we have some more PlayStation 1 titles making our way into the very very few PC Engine games that they had on hand and we have uh, some fishing action and then we have columns for 1500 and then here let's take a look at some PlayStation 2 titles we have the Street Fighter 0 anthology the Tetris collection and then here's a gem look at that biohazard outbreak oh man I remember playing that game back in its heyday and it was an awesome experience. It's a shame they haven't uh, brought anything uh, kind of... They haven't um, remastered that game. That game definitely deserves it. And then here we have a KOF Maximum Impact. Uh, I believe that's uh, A, something like that. And then we have a Grow Lancer 2. What else do we have? I'm not sure what this is, but I definitely like that watercolor uh, looking cover. And it looks fun. Definitely a lot safer than what uh, Kowloon's Gate has uh, looming. <laughs> What else do we have? Some Midnight. Now, this game is kind of like Initial D. I don't know if it's in the same universe, but could be a good racing game for the PlayStation 2. And then here we have another game that looks uh, pretty chill. And then we have File 2, Biohazard Outbreak. That was another great game. And then we have this by Irem, but I have no idea what this could be, but definitely wanted to show it off because I'm a big fan of all things Irem. A lot of great games out of that studio. And then this cover. Look at this beautiful thing. I just love the way that the heat is coming out in this uh, in this illustration. It's a very beautiful cover, fastest one by Human, but that is definitely stunning artwork there. And then here we have some Xbox 360 titles. Nothing really too uh, remarkable, but we do have a Halo 3. And look at the price on this bad boy, 300 yen. Now let's go ahead and pull out Gears of War, and that's going to be coming in at 500 yen. My goodness. And then next to that, we have Eternal Arcadia for 1,500. Skies of Arcadia in the West. And then we have Space Channel 5 for 800. I never played that game. And then we have uh, Capcom vs. SNK for 800. And then 2012, so I think that's Psychic something. And then we have Rent a Hero for 1,500. I believe this one didn't get a... No, this one definitely didn't get a release in North America, but I'm not sure about Europe. Definitely wouldn't mind trying that one. Then we have Code Veronica. We have Grandia for uh, 500 yen. And then next to that, we have this uh, limited edition of Melty Lancer for 2,500 yen. Now, this did include all the little extras, and this thing definitely had some weight to it. Uh, I, was, I was actually quite surprised with how heavy it is. And then here, look, look at this. We have, what is this? Angel's Paradise Volume 2 for 2,000 yen. And we're going to get a sneak peep here. Look at that. If this is what you're after, they definitely have it. And then we have Evander Holyfield's The Real Deal Boxing. I love boxing, I'm a huge fan of boxing, and it was definitely cool to see this one there. And then look at the cover to Echo the Dolphin. Look at the perspective on this thing. That's another amazing cover. I'm not really a fan of Echo, but I definitely am a fan of that cover art. Absolutely stunning, that. And then we have some Landstalker. Now, I believe this is related to um, Alundra. On the PlayStation 1. I think it's in the same universe. I could be wrong, but that hero looks like the same dude from Alundra. And then we have some Pokemon action there. And then here we go. Let's go ahead and make our way into some hardware. And these joysticks uh, by Capcom, these things are amazing. You can go from four to eight gate just on, on the flip of a switch. And these, I highly recommend these. I, def I have one and uh, one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it also supports Famicom as well as wireless functionality. 
But here we have uh, the twin sticks for the PlayStation 1. We got a racing wheel for the 360. And then we have some arcade actions, the joysticks. But these are the real gems. Look at this. We have the Neo sticks by Hori. And we have the version 2. I had no idea that, that, that there was a version 2. And that's coming in at 12,000 yen. For the hardcore Neo Geo collectors, you know, this is definitely a little bit of a showpiece. And I believe uh, Hori got sued by uh, SNK for making these things because they weren't a licensed, uh, officially licensed uh, holder, whatever you want to call it. But let's go ahead and look at some DS and 3DS games. Here we have some uh, Yoshi's, uh, Yoshi's Island business. I almost got that game, by the way. And then we have Biohazard Deadly Silence for 1,500 yen. And then we have some Kingdom Hearts action. And then next to that, we have this Doraemon game. And I want to say that this one looks very, very interesting, especially the artwork. Look at that. This could be actually a pretty good 2D uh, looking game. And then we have Nam then the Namco Museum there. We have Fantasy Star Zero. That Doraemon game, if I, if I see it again at a decent price, I'm going to pick it up. This one didn't look as interesting. That DS one, uh, definitely that 2D flavor, uh, definitely gives it the edge. And then here we'll just kind of comb over our 3DS and, uh, well, mostly 3DS DS titles. We got some Nintendo Switch action going on, but nothing really to stand out. But we do have on the PlayStation Vita this Biohazard Revelations 2 for 2,000 yen. Now this one chugs a little bit, but definitely worth, uh, worth trying if you haven't tried it before. Although, I think I have so many copies of uh, Revelations too, it's crazy. What else do we have here? We got some Wii U and some Wii games. But yeah, as, as you can see, it's a pretty chill inventory. What, what do we have here? Chibi Robo for 1,500. I wonder if this is any good. I know this was released in the West, but I never gave it a... Uh, I guess I never gave it much attention. And then these are our PS4 and PS3 titles with the one that really catches my attention being this Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Oh man, I was there day one when this one launched. I still have my special edition as well. A great game, and I also have the platinum trophy on that bad boy. Look at this, a Combini Sim game. Those things could be pretty fun, but definitely are gonna be behind a huge uh, Japanese language uh, barrier. And here we have our loose carts. Always worth looking in through the uh, work. <laughs> it's always worth looking through this section let me tell you i think the most recent famicom game that i got was uh makai mura um ghosts and goblins for 500 yen which i thought was a pretty good deal it was just a loose cart but that's all i need i kind of wanted to get that one complete but at 500 yen why not then we have blast dozer i believe this was blast core in the states for 500 yen we got the king of monsters for 800 yen what else do we have? We have a uh, Goemon uh, 2 for 800 yen. That's a, that's an awesome game. And not a bad price, that. What else do we have? Super something. And then we have Tecmo Super Bowl for 500 yen. I wonder if that says... I wonder if that one's any good, that Tecmo Super Bowl. I haven't played that one before. What else do we have here? Hyperzone for 1,000 yen. That one has like a Mode 7 style uh, visual type of look. And another copy of Hyperzone. And what else do we have here? Nothing that really, really, really sticks out. And then here we have Sonic and Tails, Sonic 2. And then we have Sonic and Tails once again. But this one was released a year after. So I wonder what, what, the, what the major difference is between that. And then we have Puyo Puyo by Compile for the Game Gear for 1,000 yen there. And then down below, we have all Kirby. And we have some more Game Gear action. We got a J-League soccer game there. What else do we have here? Just an assortment of all these uh, handheld titles. And then some limited edition titles here. With uh, Persona 5, we have The Royal. And this is Persona 5, The Royal Straight Flush Edition. And that, that box was also pretty, uh, pretty weighty. I wonder what's all included in that. I have that game. I have the PS3 version. And then we have AKB... 48 Akihabara 48 for 2,000 yen and then here we have our complete in the box games not quite rare enough to make it in the in the retro display case but this one is this one is not bad this snowboarding kids I have this I have the loose cart and I believe this is also available on the PlayStation 
but I believe it's only the N64 version that has the four player co op. I could be wrong, but if I remember correctly, I believe that's that was the that was uh, how it was. We have pilot wings, and then in the back, look at that, we have Shinobi. We got the ninjas lurking in the shadows for 3,500 yen, and I believe it could be missing the manual there. And then up above, we have East Wanderers from East Part 3. Haven't played this one, but uh, the ones on the PC Engine are pretty cool, especially the soundtracks, my goodness. We got Fire Emblem, some Star Fox, some Fatal Fury 2, and then we have uh, some Chess Master and this NBA game by Konami. And this one looks actually really good, especially with the perspective. It kind of reminds me of Slam and Jam on the 3DO, PS1, and Sega Saturn. We have Rockman X for 4,000 yen. I guess that's not too bad of a price, you know, considering uh, that it's complete there. But it looks a little tad bit, uh, a little bit faded. We have Donkey Kong here for the Game Boy. This one was a little bit tempting. I should have picked that up. 2,000 yen, that's not too bad. And then we have Hattress. Look at that, 800 yen. That box is pretty clean. But judging by the screenshots, it's probably not how I would imagine it to be, but who knows. Then we have some Twin B action here for 1,500 yen. Haven't played this on the Famicom. And then we have Rockman 4 for 5,000. And that box is pretty clean. That's not, Maybe that's not too bad of a price. What do you all think? And then here we go up above. We have some Pokemon action. Some more Pokemon goodness. But not, not too bad of a selection here. And then this looks like some Hamtaro type of business for the Game Boy Color. But let's go ahead and make our way into the retro display case. Now, at a, at a glance, it looks pretty bare bones. But let's, let's, uh, let's give it, definitely give it, let's give it some attention here and see what all they have. We have some Namco game part four of something. And then here we go. We got Act Razor 2 for 6,000. We have Choplifter right above for 5,000. We have uh, Parodius up above that for 5,000. And then we have Mappy Kids for 1,500 for the Famicom. I had no idea that Mappy had a sequel. We got Dragon Quest 3. And then we have Gradius, 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 whatever you want to call it, for 2,000 yen. That's a great game. Although the price seems a little bit high. And then we got some uh, Technos games. And then we got Tom and Jerry's House Trap for 3,500. And then what do we have in the back? We have Bonk's Adventure 2 for 2,000. And then we have Thunder Spirits for 1,000. 500 yen i definitely picked that one up i've been wanting to get that one for quite some time as i'm after a lot of the classic shooting games on the super famicom and they had a number of uh, dragon quest 3 copies we have uh, shiren for the n64 and then densha go 64 and then in the the shelf up above let's see what they have here now the one that really sticks out to me is going to be that salamander cart for 2000 yen and we'll definitely have some close-up shots of this stuff so we can get a closer look. A number of Star Wars titles, uh, copies for, for the Super Famicom as well. Also that Prince of Persia. We'll have a def definitely have a closer look at that one. But we got some Twin B for 1,500. We got a Rockman X3 for 1,500. They have another copy, which we'll have a look at, which is a little bit more expensive. I'm not sure what that is by Jellico. And there's the Twin B stuff. Twin, that's not too bad of a price but look at this prince of persia 2500 that's probably one of the maybe i don't want to say if it's the lowest but definitely one of the lowest uh prices that i've seen i guess i did say it but here we have some star wars for 1500 pretty cool that they're little silver carts have no idea what this capcom game could be but it does look interesting this is looking like an msx title with bruce lee a bruce lee type character and then here's our salamander for 2,000 yen. That's a beautiful looking cart, by the way. And then we have some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles action there for 2,000. I'm not sure what the game below that is, though. But here we go. Right there, we have some Neo Geo Pocket Color games. I recently picked up a Neo Geo Pocket Color at the junk section at a Surugaya for a pretty good deal, 6,000 yen. And the battery terminal was a little bit gunked up. I cleaned that up, and that thing is running like a dream now. And I want to get some games for it. And this place had a few decent deals. But what, what do we have here? We have Klonoa there for 1,500 yen for the Game Boy Advance. I wonder if those are any good. And then we have Gradius Generation for 6,500. Don't know too much about that release. And then we have some Mahjong Police by Hudson Soft. 
We got some Bomberman for the Game Boy Part 2. We got Nemesis. Now, I believe Nemesis was coming in at 1,500 yen. And then there we have our, our Neo Geo uh, Pocket Color titles. Some good ones, too. We got R2, Fatal Fury. We got uh, some Game Boy titles there. But not too bad of a selection. And, and it's like I said, you know, when I was here, it was a little bit of a letdown. But now kind of looking back at the footage, um, I, there's a few titles that I probably would have been more interested in picking up now with what I have now. So you just never know. And let's see here. We have a uh, Gundam the best for 2,500 yen. And then we have, uh, what is that? Galaxy Fight and then Samurai Showdown 4. And then here we have some Amiibos. Some of them are coming in at, at as, as low as uh, 1,500 yen. And then we have this Club Nintendo Touch uh, little gold uh, Mario figurine for 3,000 yen. So if you're a hardcore collector of all things Nintendo, they have this little bad boy just kind of hiding out in the back. And then we have the RAM expansion there. We got two of them for the N64 coming in at 3,000 yen. And then let's go ahead and go into one of my favorite sections, the junk section. We got a Game Gear coming in at 4,000 yen. Now, guys, like with my personal collection with my consoles and handhelds, I want to say 90% of my collection has come from the junk section. So definitely don't discount the junk section. They do have testing stations. You can test this stuff out. And that's one of the things we'll do on, on my, my tours. So definitely just an, another, little, uh, <laughs> another little plug. But here we go. What do we have in the back here? We got a Sega Mark something uh, controller for 2,000 yen. Look at the D-pad on that thing. I've never tried that, but something tells me that that's not really comfy. But who knows? Sega has proven, proven me wrong many times. And <laughs> not always in a good way, but... Here we go. Uh, we have the Wii U for 5,000 yen. We got an MSX coming in at 8,000 yen. And I'm not really sure what the issue there is. But then look at that kind of hiding in the back. We have Castlevania Symphony of the Night for 2,000 yen. And then we got our loose cards just kind of chilling in the junk section. But the games that I got in the very beginning, those four games, that would amount to 20,000 yen in Akihabara easily. And those games were destined for the junk section so definitely definitely look at every every part of the store because you just never know what you'll find and then here's our junk section proper with the all the hardware here and we got a mega drive coming in at 5,000 yen a couple of our uh, ps3s up above we have this uh what is this pikachu business coming in at a thousand yen Got a racing wheel, and more of these are going to be, these VR headsets, they're going to be littering the junk section pretty soon. And then we have an assortment of 360s and PS3 fats. And a lot of the place they, or a lot of the 360s were actually, they were working, they were functioning. They just weren't complete. But here we have an Elite. Now the Elite one, what didn't have the, the hard drive. And I was actually kind of tempted by it. That, that's a nice little, that's a nice looking machine coming in at 3,000 yen. Not too bad there. And then look at that, more maracas. These things are everywhere. Now, the crazy thing is this one is in the junk section, but it's actually more expensive than the one that we saw earlier. This one's coming in at 5,000 yen, my goodness. And, and it's kind of heavy too. And then just, the, just an assortment of cards here. I looked through that and there wasn't really anything that caught my attention and I'm looking through this too. I'm looking for the S video cable for, for the 360 as I want to play that on my CRT. And a little bit higher fidelity. All sorts of cables there. I love rubbaging through these cables. You just never know what you're going to find. I think one of the coolest ones that I found was a VGA for the Wii. A VGA cable for the, for the plain old Wii. But anyhow, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you soon. Ciao.